Uh, my name is Bob Doherty. I'm with Colony Foods, and uh, I want to thank everybody that has uh, today, and uh, hopefully you really enjoy it. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, one of the founders and owners of the company, uh, Joe Bob Gallo. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for all that you've done. Thanks to all this. Thanks for everyone who's here today. Uh, there's going to be a second session. You're aware. Say thank you to, uh, to all the vendors that are here. I'd like to give them a round of applause. I'd like to thank the sales staff. I'd like to thank my brothers, my sons. For all the work that they do, for the people who aren't here, the girls in the warehouse, the girls in the, in the office, the guys who deliver to you in trucks, I'd like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, I believe that what you do is phenomenal. I, I just, the amount of work and effort that you put in, and uh, the people who care, I want to thank everybody who came today, that you're special. You're very special, uh, you're very special, you're special for doing business with us, you're special that you're coming taking this time to learn about how to improve your business. And today, more than any other time since we've been in this business, and we probably, well, we've been in for 19 years as Colony Foods, actually 18 years, we just celebrated 18 years. We have a new warehouse facility, 18,000 square feet of new refrigeration, freezer, uh, loading docks, and it's going to, uh, we're proud of it because it's going to mean better service, it's going to mean better handling material, get a better handling of product. And that's uh, that's wonderful. The, we had a sales meeting about uh, two months ago, and Kay Taylor came in, and everybody got it. She got everyone excited, excited about what we do. And the one question that all our salespeople always ask, always say is, how can we increase your business? How can we help you, as an independent operator, to, to put more money on the table on a weekly basis. And so it's been difficult because prices have gone up in every category. And if you ask any of the people here, they'll tell you why. You know, from corn oil to putting uh, putting it in your cars, that uh, a bushel of corn now at four dollars and fifty cents it makes it makes fuel instead of two fifty and two dollars used to feed the cows to make milk. And everything goes up accordingly. And it's lousy. So the first thing, I just had a couple of thoughts that I would say. First thing is, if you haven't, has anybody raised their prices in the last in the last uh, month or two? Raised your retail prices? Okay, that's the first thing I would tell you is multiply times 1.7. Take your take your product, take your list, and multiply times 1.07, 1.07, and use a new price point. You won't lose any customers. You bring back that $500, $700 a week that you're losing. And then the second thought is, how do you increase? You know, that will put an extra $700, $800, $1,000 $1, in your pocket every week. It's yours. You're entitled to it. You've, been, you've held out this long expecting something to change, but it hasn't changed. So that's one thought, quick thought. And then another has always been my favorite. If you did this two or three times a week, you will get one out of the three or two out of the three to be new customers. And would be take a, take a pizza, pick any pick a time, look around, find anyone who has four cars in their driveway. Go there with your pizza, your menu, introduce yourself, and welcome them to your place. You probably get anywhere from. 60 to 90 percent of those people will come and be a customer 52 weeks a year. So that, that to me, try it. Just try that. And without any further thinking, Kay, I've known Kay for about seven years. She's part of the buying group that we belong to. The buying group that we belong to is the third or fourth largest buying power in the United States. Cisco was first, U.S. Food Service is second, and we compete with one another, and that helps 
the advantage, gives us the advantage to get you, everyone here, the best prices. So, uh, and Kay has been part of the sales team, the, uh, the marketing, uh, and she's always been there. She has, uh, she has her own dynamic, and Kay Taylor, thank you. Thank you, Joe. something special about Joe and Colony Foods. I, I don't come cheap. They have brought me here to be able to help you succeed. They realize that they don't go anywhere without your success. Now, I just heard this morning someone saying three places just within a mile, I think, from here have gone out of business in the last year. Now, this is what's happening out there. 60% of operations like yours, go out of business within the first three years of operation. And so we want to help you succeed. We've got to help you make money. We've got to help you be profitable, especially when prices all over the country, that we all see it in our personal lives with gas, and we see it as it's impacting us in many ways in our businesses. Let's help you bring more customers in the door. And then the second session today, how to manage those costs, how to maximize your menu, be able to make you the most profits that you possibly can. That is what it's all about. Now, the first thing that you'll learn about me is that I like to kind of start things off with a bang. So if everybody would please grab a balloon. If everybody would please grab a balloon. Grab a balloon. Look around you. Oh, there's a couple on the floor. Grab a balloon. Grab a balloon. Oh, we've got one over here. We've got one over here. Grab a balloon. Grab a balloon. Grab a balloon. We're gonna, we're gonna break our balloons together. We're gonna break old habits and learn new things, folks. All right, on the count of three. Give me care if you want any cream poppers. Yeah, here we go. Okay, on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Nobody is 
I'm going to be concerned about um, checking or testing or anything. We're just going to have a little fun with the numbers. So I want you to break down a dollar. What those expenses are that the average operator, like yourself, face, and what do they end up with out of, with a, out of a dollar? How many cents out of a dollar does the average operator end up with, according to the National Restaurant Association? Now there's going to be, you know, some fluctuation in numbers. You know, it's going to be your labor um, may be much more expensive in downtown Manhattan than it's going to be in Montana. However, what you're going to do is do these are the averages. But I just want to give us an idea of what we're looking at. So let's take a few minutes. Now remember, of course, it needs to add up to a dollar. Now there's one category on this sheet that is less than a half of a cent. Who can tell me what that category is? Remember, I paid for good answers. Who can tell me what that category is? Music and entertainment. Music and entertainment. Who said it? He already knew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 
Now we knew about music and entertainment, right? That's actually 0.2, so it's less than a half of a cent is music and entertainment. So how about marketing and advertising? You know, these folks would all love for us to be spending 10% in marketing and advertising, but it's not close. That's not, who said three? Okay, I'm going to pay for the three, it's 1.7. All right, how about energy and utilities? 3.5, we'll pay for somebody who had three. I think it's right over here, three, we'll pay for three. 3.5 is actually the number. Administrative, how about administrative? Anybody want to give it a shot? Another low number? 3.1, who said four? Let's pay this gentleman here for, for the four, but it's 3.1 is actually. How about repairs and maintenance? Repairs and maintenance. 1.4, 1 1.4, 1 1.4. 1 okay. Now how about these gentlemen? You were guys were pretty sharp. Were there any answers that you got that you didn't get paid for? You guys? Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah, you were. Shocker. Yeah, he got it. Okay, how about rent and lease, folks? Rent and lease. Oh, six is right on the money. Six is right on the money. Let's pay this young lady in the green. You get, he gets a pen. You can pay this young lady in the green right there. Okay, how about property tax and insurance? 30%. Oh, somebody said two right over here, wasn't it? Two. Let's pay this gentleman right over there. Okay, that leaves us with a total of 96 cents, ladies and gentlemen. That means for you, the operator. Uh-huh, it's four cents out of the dollar. It's four cents out of the dollar. Now, the reason I give you those white sheets is because you can take those white sheets home with you and share that with your employees. If your employees are in the back of the house thinking, oh man, they're raking up the big bucks. Let them think again. Because it's, we, have, we can't make money in this business. We can be very profitable in this business. But the margins, we have to do the job well, because the margins are tight. The margins are tight. That's why I'm here, is to see if I can bring you some things that are working nationally that may be able to help you grow. Because the answer is, in this number, it's not the pennies, but helping you make the dollars. That's what it's all about. We can stop worrying about the tiny penny part, and let's try to bring in the dollars because that's where you make your, makes, makes the difference. The only reason folks to be in this business is to create a customer. That is our whole focus, is to create a customer, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, the common sense approach to marketing is to making your customers feel important, keeping your place of business clean and welcoming. You want to be a good neighbor. All of that wins out over big, flashy media campaigns. This is the key. And one of the greatest things that we have, being an independent operation such as yours, is the fact that you can make that difference. You can make that difference. The chains have structure that they must follow. You can be flexible. You can call your customers by name. You can remember the things that they care about, the things their preferences. Those are the kinds of things that you can bring in, specialty items that you can create on your own. Maybe your own particular pizza create, creation. So this is what we can do ourselves that helps us stand apart. Okay, the prime factors are these. And if you think that the customers come to you because of price, this is, goes against all the national surveys. They come because of the quality of your food. Guess what the numbers show, folks? The numbers show that the average, um, your patron, your patron says that you as an independent pizzeria make a better pizza than any chain, than any Domino's, any Pizza Hut. That is actually what the American people have said, that your pizza is better. And you've got to have a quality offering. That's the only way to truly survive. Now, 
I had a chain of stuffies, sub shops, right? And I was working with those folks, and all of them had an individual franchisee owner. And so the new franchisee or owner comes in, and he was using a, a top quality turkey breast, a three-piece turkey breast. And so he was showing this particular, uh, it, that was the number one sandwich in all the stuffies, the whole chain. And so the new franchisee owner comes in and says, oh no, no, I, I know that, that I can get a cheaper product than that. And I said, well, I have a lot of different kinds of turkey breasts. I can have lesser quality turkey breasts, but do you want to mess with that success? This is the number one sandwich in your, in your uh, whole chain, all of the chain. There's a flavor profile in there. You know, there's something that's working when it comes to quality. And so he said, oh no. And so what he wanted to do, he went with a cheaper turkey breast. He went with turkey ham, turkey salami, turkey bologna. I mean, this was the garbage sub of the decade. Now, he probably had one of the lowest food costs of any of the stuffies in that chain, but he only lasted three months, folks, because it's what your customers come in for. The quality of your food, the experience they have, the fact that they love being in your neighborhood, they feel at home in your facility. It's something that we're offering. They feel they love the family atmosphere that you have in your establishment. This is what they come for. So I want you to be very wary about compromising yourself, making sure you get the money you deserve for your products, as Joe mentioned earlier. But these are the most important factors, quality, service, selection, and then price. That's what the surveys show that your patrons are looking for. All right, let's move on. Okay, 40% of customers who've had a bad service experience, they tell their friends. Now, less than half of that number tell their friends about a good experience. So we've got to take, be very, very wary of giving them that bad service or that bad impression. Everybody has that in, uh, invisible sign around their neck, make me feel important, like Mary Kay of Mary Kay Cosmetics said. That's what we can do that sets us apart from all the chains um, and that you can stand alone. 90% of unhappy customers never complain. They just don't come back. But they tell their friends about you if they've had a bad experience. And when employees are empowered to make those decisions about problems or concerns, they feel empowered. They feel part of, of a, you know, the decision-making part of your operation. And every employee should be fully aware that you have a policy of never arguing, rarely disagreeing, always trying to fix what the problem is for your patrons. Okay, 67% of customers never come back because of what? Service. Service is what usually they say, but who said? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, we'll give it to the young lady who gave it a try. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. It's good though, because these are the folks, these are the folks, and they wanted to, they wanted to know, because they want to help you succeed. They want that information, because they want to help you succeed. They want to make sure that they're supporting you in every way possible. All right, it is cleanliness, folks. It is cleanliness. Now maybe the husband says, oh honey, where would you like to go? Where would you like to go out to eat? Where do you want to take the kids tonight? She's making those decisions. She says, okay, honey, let's go here. She goes into the bathroom and the bathroom's dirty. She thinks the kitchen's dirty. They're not coming back. So you may spend all of this and we talk about all these wonderful advertising <coughs> methods, but you gotta make sure the bathrooms are clean. We had a, I had a wonderful restaurant called Monte Calvo's. It was a wonderful Italian place. And he had a big stainless steel kitchen. You know what his specialty, uh, uh, the thing that set him apart? He said, we've got the cleanest kitchen in the city. He would have customers come in and walk around his kitchen to show how clean it was. How cool was that? I mean, what a wonderful, what a wonderful, unique selling proposition that we're going to talk about in a second. Make sure the cleanliness factor can be a big factor for you. Actually,
actually NRA, National Restaurant Association, says that you should check your bathrooms every hour. Now we think, oh my gosh, Kay, I'm lucky if I can get out from under to check, you know, every, every little while. But we need to be checking as often as we can to make sure that the bathrooms are in good condition. The most important thing that we need to do is we need to have a plan when it comes to marketing. I want to bring more people in your door. I want you to have more loyal customers. When I spoke, I was very, very blessed because I spoke at the National Restaurant Association last year for the first time. Now, to me, that's the Super Bowl of speaking in our business. Of course, I told my friends, I said, oh, I'm going to speak at the NRA. They said, okay, but you didn't know you owned a rifle. <laughs> no, it was the National Restaurant Association, not National Rifle Association. But they had, I did a lot of research, and they said that family-owned restaurants, like what we have, independent restaurants that we have, 80% of our business is done with repeat business. 80%. That means we've got to keep those people interested in coming back. We've got to keep giving them a reason why they need to be coming back to our establishments. You've got to have a plan. So we're, what we're going to do is give you a lot of options today, things that you might try. Make those selections. And let me hand out if I can have help in handing out, thank you. It's a two-piece, two-piece set. There's a <coughs> and the green girls, they're both the same. It's a two-piece set. Everybody should get a set. giant 
has succeeded by being able to take a few minutes. You say, oh, well, I really don't have time, okay? Gosh, I'm so buried. I'm asking you to take a little time. Let me give, just give you an example. If you take a little bit of time and you invest in, and analyze your business just a little bit, there's a big payoff for you. And isn't it something about taking that little time? Man, it keeps paying off. Yeah. And isn't it funny about that? It just keeps paying off. And, oh my gosh, I gotta get another cup. Because yes, it keeps paying off right with me. Do I get a round of applause for that? <laughs> you know how long it takes me to empty this thing out before I can put it in my suitcase without getting my clothes wet? <laughs> no, you can't put your beer in here. Yeah, it keeps paying off. That time that you take to think about your business. Where are you? <laughs> oh yeah, it'll keep on going. All right, the time that it takes for you to do that, you've got to be able to find out where you are. In one sense, describe your unique selling proposition. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Describe your marketing budget, how much that's going to be. Remember, the national average is 1.7. But you need to have money allocated to your growth. It is essential. It is essential to your growth. And then you're going to list all those proposed marketing vehicles. What are the things you're going to want to do? And we're going to make several lists of several of those today that you can choose from. What are you going to go after and plan on how to attack those? Okay. These are some of the possibilities of objectives. These are things that you may want to go after. Maybe you want to go after more awareness. Hey, I'm here. You know, I've got lots of um, people in my area, businesses maybe, maybe you want to promote awareness, build a mailing list, you want to get community goodwill, you want to get excitement about your offering, generating public relations, generating traffic, engaging your staff, get them more involved. Maybe you want to have your image improved, increasing your sales, staff incentives, any of these things. All of these are possibilities, but you're going to look at that and figure out where it is that I want to target. What do I want to focus on first? Maybe you want to have a, a, a simulate a trial visit, somebody coming in for the first time. Okay, number one is your unique selling proposition. What we have to do here, folks, is that we have to, we have to find out what you do well. You have to find out what you do well. Let me give you an example. Anybody remember now what I've just said? What, who can tell me what that stands for? There we go. Let's pay it. Let's pay that. Let's get that. It's okay. Unique selling proposition. And you say, well, gosh, okay, that sounds like that is a marketing term. You say, what the heck? What the heck does that mean, you know? Domino's, a number of years ago, make, make good pizza just like everybody else. But they did one thing. They put themselves on the marketing map. What was it? Delivery in less than 30 minutes. Absolutely. Let's give that to you. It was delivery in 30 minutes or less. They made marketing history because then they did one thing that set them apart from anybody else. And I'm asking you to find one thing about yourself that sets you apart. Now, these are some taglines. Let's see if we can have some folks and we'll give them a few more dollars. Who can guess that these taglines belong to? Just do it! Nike. Ooh, who was first? Ooh, you might have to help me. <laughs> Let's see, I think that the, I think the woman in the, in the green t-shirt. I can. I can. <laughs> okay. Okay, how about raise your hand if you know it, so that we know who to give the money to. How about be all that you can be? Ooh, this gentleman right here was first. You bet you, baby, give him that dollar. Okay, how about, bet you can't eat just one. Whoa. Ladies, potato chips, give it away. Okay, how about we go here? Reach out and touch someone. Reach out and touch, yeah. Yeah, we go, give it to him. Okay, how about, we've come a long way, baby.
go. Little dabble, do you? Now we got some aid. This is this is what. Yeah. Oh no no no. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Where's the beef? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Make sure you raise your hand. Okay. All right. Here we go. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. This young lady. Yes! Give it up, Simon! There you go. All right. You're in good hands with Okay, the lady in the green right here. Okay. All right, now here's a hard one. Here's a hard one. Take it off. Take it all off. Okay, what ways can you be number one? Quality. Maybe you've got the quality products and that is what you push throughout your whole um, organization. Service. Maybe you treat your customers like family. Speed. You know how many lunch places had, hey, we'll get your product out to you in record amount of time because people have to get in and get out of lunch. Maybe it's convenience. Hey, we're right around the corner. Maybe it's experience. I'll tell you what, I've got um, handouts with these so you don't have to copy them down. Get some help hand those out. Okay, great. Okay, experience. Maybe it is something that you've been in business um, and you have maybe brought in a, a specialist or whatever that might be. Innovation. What did Pizza Hut do when it came to innovation? They did something that was innovative. What product? What was it? Cheese inside the crust. Cheese inside the crust. Yeah, I'd give that gentleman a dollar. Okay, maybe it is unique promotion. What did Little Caesars do when it came to a unique promotion? Pizza, pizza, pizza. Pizza, pizza, pan, pan. Two pizzas for the price of one. Let's give that gentleman a dollar. Okay, what did Wendy's do when it came to, uh, to ours? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, it was Wendy's. Yeah, it was Wendy's. Yes, open late. Give that young lady a dollar. Let's see, where are they? Okay, we're <laughs> They're coming. You want some money? Okay. You want Eric a dollar? How about reputation? Maybe we have. Um, maybe we have um, been known in our neighborhood, and we're we're a wonderful community support. We're a wonderful um, supporter of charities. Maybe your reputation is what you're talking about. Maybe it's longevity. We've been in business since 1978. Specialties. Maybe it's something that you do. You have your own unique toppings, or whatever that specialty thing might be for you. Maybe it's selection. Maybe you have more beer, uh, different kinds of. Um, uh, domestic beer than anybody in town. Maybe it's trend awareness. What did Subway do when it came to trend awareness? Yeah, the guy losing all the weight, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because and we don't know whether we believe this guy that he lost the weight eating those six grams of less, but it certainly set them apart. It was something that they did better. Now, it doesn't actually, maybe it's atmosphere. Maybe you're family um, uh, friendly, or maybe you are a wonderful place for kids. Um, all of those kinds of things can help set you apart. It doesn't have to be fancy. I know a place in um, in Tennessee, he says he cooks like your mama. So a place is called Uncle Pete, so maybe you don't like how your mama cooks. But, <laughs> um, but being able to pick one thing about whatever your establishment is that you do that's special, then you want to promote that at every opportunity. Okay, some possibilities, freshly prepared, best place for families, best dining value, most romantic, home cooking, Fast lunch service, ethnic food type offering, extensive line of beer selection, signature items, strongest drinks, best dessert, great coffee. All of those things are possible for you. All right, now we have to know your market. 80% of your business is in what radius? Three. Three. It's actually three to five miles. Three to five. One survey says three, and the other says five. Now the point of this is if you're dropping two grand with the newspaper who comes bopping in and says, oh, I can get you 100,000 readers. 
But if that's all done without, if it's not in your radius, how cost effective is that uh, expenditure that you have? Oftentimes, local marketing is more profitable for you, more profitable for your operation, and it's less costly. <coughs> so you want to know your market. You want to shop the competition, watch for what they do well. Don't just go in and say, oh, I do that better. Oh, yeah, I do that better. Oh, yeah, I do that better. Go in and find out what they do well. What are they doing that's working? So you want to make sure, even if you don't go out yourself, maybe you send some of your staff out. You want to cross market with local businesses. Now, this is an important factor that you can take. Look around your neighborhood. Maybe it's a movie rental place. Maybe it is a car dealership in which you have a special offer that goes to the other business, and the other business can have you know, your special offer in their establishment. Maybe the car dealers um, that they um, get to do a test drive, if they do a test drive, you send them over and they do a test drive, and they get a special offering from your establishment. You want to work closely with those people in your area. And you also want to watch for maybe special things in your area like a transportation hub or a hotel or a YMC or a sports park because all these might be opportunities for you to distribute a promotional opportunity to those places. So look around you in your market area. You've got to know your market area. <coughs> you want to build a team. You want to treat your employees as internal customers. We, unfortunately, in the food service business, this is what the employee says. Well, I'm just doing this till I get a real job. Right? And so we often have to struggle with the fact that we have employees. And we want to make sure we treat them as internal customers. If they feel that they're a part of something, those people leave their jobs because of their boss. That is like 83%, I think those numbers say, that they leave because of their boss. So being able to be the kind of, of company that somebody wants to work for, if they want to be a part of something. Maybe it's a family atmosphere that you have, that you want to treat all those employees like family. Supply business cards to all your employees after 90 days employment. And you say, uh, you know, even if the guy's mopping the floor, you put sanitation supervisor on his card, and he only uses that card to get a date on Saturday night, it doesn't matter. All you're interested in doing is helping him feel like he's actually a part of something. That is not he's just doing this until he gets a real job. So being a part, making your employees feel a part of something helps. Now, hand out, you've impressed me cards. Let's um, pass out some of those. You go into the grocery store and you see something that's real enthusiastic, you just love their attitude, and I can send you email versions of any of these things if you're interested. I can hand out, we're going to be doing several today, so let me pass out this, this contact sheet if you would like to get any of these things emailed to you. We don't send anything um, um, uh, to you unless you would like to have it, but, and we're not selling anything. All I'm interested in is if you would like to get the template. I can send it to you by email. But anyway, you've impressed me. You see that exciting person, that enthusiastic person, maybe it's a wait staff person, maybe it's a grocery store clerk, maybe it's a dry cleaner clerk, maybe it's a car wash attendee. doesn't matter. You hand them a card saying, you have impressed me. If you want to have a growth opportunity, I would love to come for you to come and be a part of our family, our family. And so now you start getting those characteristics that you love, the excitement, the enthusiasm. You're looking for those people. Have those cards with you at all times. You're always going to be recruited, always going to be recruited for good people. Use evaluation cards. Now I just have these, I have the white sheet, so you can just have, I have plenty of the white sheet, I think, the, but the, at least the purple sheet, just a half page in which you would be able to send in maybe a mystery shopper, somebody in your family to come into your establishment and evaluate 
your wait staff person, if you've got inside seating, you know, to be able to evaluate and say um, how they did. Did you like them? Did, they get, did I get my check promptly? That kind of thing. And so you can use those evaluations to help and give feedback to your people. If you've got a back of the house and front of the house kind of operation, and it's not just um, pick up and delivery, if you've got that, I want you to do evaluate, have the back of the house evaluate the front of the house. The front of the house evaluate the back of the house. You might find out where your problems lie. Make sure it's done both ways. You don't just have um, your cooks to be able to evaluate your wait staff people without the reverse being also true, but you might uncover a problem. You might uncover a problem. Train for answering the phone and phone orders. You've got to make sure that we've got exactly what you want to say. If you need to write a script, write a script. But what's happening out there is that we want to have, and we want to look for those selling opportunities. If you want your folks welcome to Sam's Pizzeria, the home of the greatest chicken wings around that you're trying to add, not only to your pizza business, but add to that takeout delivery you want to add those wings on, look for those selling opportunities on items that you would like to push, that you would like to um, promote to your clientele. Set out a script exactly for them to read off to make sure they, they know exactly what you want them to say. Always tell them um, to smile. If you want them to smile, you can tell a smile on the phone. I don't think I've placed an order in the last two years that I could tell the person on the other end of my ordering a pizza at my local place, smile. Absolutely. So you simply know, we're going to talk about ways that we can reward and incent those guys to do those things that you want them to do. But um, easy opportunities. Have written directions. They say, they call up and they say, now where do you, how do you get to your place? Well, you know the old firehouse down here on the right hand? People don't know that. that they're, they're calling because they don't know. Have written directions on exactly how to get to your place, east, west, north, or south. Have them by the phone so that the person can read off so they can easily get to your establishment. Challenge them to dress up or decorate for the holidays. Maybe having a little fun, maybe giving a, uh, a, a day off for the best costume or a day off for the best decoration, something like that, or maybe they get to pick their own schedule that next week. All of those might be possibilities that can be inexpensive for you to be able to do, but also help that uh, feel that camaraderie, feeling that your staff is a part of something. After 90 days, let your employee family get half off when they come in to visit. And that will encourage the whole family to be a part of, your employee's family to be a part of your operation. Again, rewarding for the time that they've been there, same way with the business cards. Share um, high tip success stories in your shift meeting. Um, and pass out candy for right answers. Let's say you say, okay, describe the new pizza. Describe the new toppings for the pizza. And someone goes in and says, oh, it's this and it's three layers of this and it's fantastic this and it's fantastic that, that. Great. So then maybe you throw a little candy bar or something their way. Like we give out the dollars, right? But throwing something their way that they answer the question right. How much um, uh, you know, chemicals go into the mop bucket? Because oftentimes we think blah, 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 the more the better, which isn't the case, right? And so when they have a right answer in one of your shift meetings, you want to reward them for the right answers. Share reality figures, the cost thing that we just did. There's nothing wrong. You don't have to open your books. But I'm just saying sharing some of those numbers with them make the doors open in their mind on what's going on with, with them and how um, the, the challenges that face our operations in the real world. Oh, just a little thing. Okay, if you play like the little knock-knock game, okay, you say, um, who's there? Ida. Ida recommend, um, you know, uh, a new appetizer for you. Or how about Dewey? Dewey, you want to order? Do you want to order an appetizer? Do you want to order this? Just something fun with, with your uh, wait staff folks. Okay, the most important thing is you got to build a customer list. On your customer list, if you do not have an existing customer list, start immediately. 
you want to have a card that you can have filled out, I can also get you a, uh, a, a template for that if you would want to have that as part of it emailed to you. But for your customer to fill out, you're looking for their birthday, no year, but you want their contact information. Maybe you give away a free dessert, maybe you give away um, something for them to fill out their customer list. If you don't have, this is your base. You want to start that immediately if you don't have one. And then things like sending out oversized postcards. You know, if you send out an, an envelope that's pre-folded in an envelope and you mail that at something that happens to us at a junk mail at home, right? You look at that, you look at the return envelope, and what do you do? Toss it before you ever even open it. But an oversized postcard, and it can be a picture, we can also send you a template on that about takeout. Um, take out something at, um, at home, I can send you a template on an oversized postcard that you can get run off. And then you, then you send that out, they're going to flip that postcard over. So you're getting your message out to those people that you've established a customer list on, and you're going to send out notifications on promotions and ways to improve your business. Repeat mailings and force that bond. They need to be touched six times in your marketing before they become motiv motivated enough uh, to, be, uh, to purchase. Maybe you try something that there's a spelling error, because we just put it in the top here, but maybe you say on your headline there's a spelling error in this ad, and then in the body of your ad, once you get your message, we're going to have a special promotion here, we're going to have a special night here, and then you put it somewhere in the spelling in the ad, they bring it in for a free dessert on your postcard. It might be another cool way to be able to bring people in. Maybe you have a horoscope slant. You know, let's say it's a cancer or a relative's visit will be longer than expected. Treat yourself to a tall one, come on in for a beer, something of that nature, that you can bring them in. People read those. That's the third most read segment in, in the newspaper. Comics is first. Who can tell me what's second? Sports. Obituaries. Oh, obituaries. <laughs> but that's right, that's right. Yeah. Or maybe a loyalty program. People coming in. People coming in and you want to reward them. We'll talk about that in just a second. New homeowner's promotion. Here, let's pass these out if we can. This is one of those, this place called Moving Targets. There's another big box of those. Here they are. They can get you homeowner's lists. If you want to be involved, there's a whole other pack, uh, there's a whole other box of them up here. All right, we want to try to gather in young people. We want to try to gather in young people, especially into our establishment. So how are we going to go about doing it? This is what we want to do. For the younger group, your um, tactics are targeted to creating goodwill towards the business on the part of the parents, school, and the community. For junior high and high school, tactics are designed to create excitement, to bring the students in with their parents or by themselves. And then when they're at the college level, we want to try to get them to try us for the first time. But oftentimes, once we have the kids in an establishment, they keep coming back and coming back and coming back, even through adulthood. It's been shown throughout many, many surveys. So how are we going to go about that? We have a happy birthday club. Then you offer the cake, maybe decorations, for them to the purchase two pizzas and beverage. For those people, if you give a cake for about four or five people, um, you do that when you've got your um, customer listing. You hold a contest for the best artwork in the school. They get holiday artwork. You put it on your walls and your windows. Get a local media person, newspaper, to come in and be judges, along with maybe some school personnel. Make sure that the school knows that you're doing that. You have that kind of display out. You're going to bring the kids, you're going to bring the parents, you're going to bring the, the rest of the class in. All of these are ways to help you. Maybe it could be holiday thing, but maybe it could be what did I do in my summer vacation kind of picture. So it doesn't necessarily have to be right around like a Christmas time. Work with the school to bring students in to maybe learn the art of pizza making. Imagine an afternoon in your establishment where you bring in a class of students to, to learn how to make pizzas. What a great promotional piece that you might be able to make for one of the classes. 
Um, it, it's a wonderful, again, way to promote yourself within the community and also getting those young people in. They will bring their parents and this is where I work. Can you believe it? This is what I did. You should taste my pizza. Maybe we can bring in, let's say it's a successful thing, you bring in the parents that evening to have them the pizza that they, the kids made. Have a recipe or name a contest for kids to create a new pizza. You run the contest and let them come up with the ideas. And even if it's outrageous, then you make the pizza on their behalf for those folks to come in and try the different pizzas that the kids came up with. Maybe you take or actually video a local game, right? Maybe it's a local soccer game or something. And then you name the night in which you're going to run and play the tape back. And all those families may be wanting to come in, those who couldn't make the game, to see a terrific game, to see a winning game, and have them come in and review and see the tape replayed. A wonderful way to bring some parents and some kids in. Maybe you offer your parking lot as a sign-up area for teens. All of these are extending your visibility, extending your presence. Now remember with any of these, as we go through these different options, what I want you to do is I want you to pick options, but I want you to also know what you can actually follow through with. That you don't just do, you want to do something and you want to make sure it's known that you're doing it, and that you want to follow through with it and keep records of what exactly happened, what was the, any cost that was involved to you, and what, what happened. Did it work? Did it not work? Post your own American Idol with the local media as judges in your establishment. All that might be possible. Report card. Two A's, three B's, no C's, get a reward. And then you want to punch the card. Oh boy, we need to give away. Um, but right as soon as we're finished, we're going to give away a lot of these uh, tickets here. I was going to say, we have some mini punches. Oh yeah, that's going to come up in just a second. Can we pass these out? Though? These are some ground floor marketing costs. Okay, local sports home runs or touchdowns you promote with the school coach. Get with the school coach and say, if one of your guys hits a home run during the game, one of your guys has a touchdown, he can come in for a free pizza because he's going to bring his family. And it's something you can get it limited to happen on the day that the game takes place. You come in the Friday night of the game. Charities are good causes. So you want to offer free merchandise for the top players in a cancer walk, as an example, or bring free, free beverages with your logo on them to a Habitat for Humanity bill. Um, everybody at your church eats at your place. Um, this is what my local church is doing. And then they eat at, the, uh, at your pizzeria. Um, the church gathers all the people that came to your pizzeria. They bring their receipts to the church. The church comes to you with all the receipts of the people that ate at your place. You can give the church 10% of whatever that total is. They are getting um, the payoff. You're getting a wonderful array of customers that would come into your establishment. Now you're talking about a huge base of, of the church folks. Free rise of patrons who consume too much alcohol if you even offer alcohol. All these are possibilities. Contact your public library or any amnesty day. They return, they return the books to your place and with, at no charge. And you just and you put a special box in which all these books can go in. But all the public libraries, they may be getting back bunches of books that they, um, that they would not have normally have gotten back. And hey, you have a lot of free publicity. Those, um, the newspapers, you need to acknowledge them when you do the charity types of things. Internal initiatives, and we're going to have to roll here. Gift certificates. If you do not have a gift certificate as we speak here today, I want you to go out and get one tomorrow. Let's call out a couple of those numbers, because I'll tell you what I've got here. I've got some gift certificate packages. We're, uh, Bob, do you have the basket? Yep. Let's call out a couple of those numbers. Let me tell you about gift certificates, people. I promise you, and this is what I've got up here, to pick up here when the number is called, you can come up and get these packets of gift certificates, or you can get these. Let me give you an example. This uh, has a picture of gift certificate that you put by your cash register. It's perfect for holidays. It is perfect for um, having by your, I'll tell you what they'll say. They'll look at it and they'll say, oh, I didn't even know you had gift certificates. 
But oftentimes these people get these gift certificates and they take, let's say they take out a $25 gift certificate for the man who doesn't have everything, the man who has everything, the woman who has everything. Let's call out a couple numbers here. Come up and get either um, your notebook or your briefcase, because we've got some more things here. Let's call out a few numbers here. 889074. 074. All right, good. Give her a hand. Come on down. Specialty punches on those report cards. When they bring those in, this is a specialty punch, so you can punch to make sure you don't pay for the same postcard or go to promotion for the same customer more than once. We've also got briefcases. Go ahead and call out a couple 889084. We're going to keep rolling here, folks, because we got some other things to chip and talk about. Right up. Right. The right. gift certificates often aren't even turned back in. You're getting the cash up front, and maybe it's a gift certificate for a happy birthday party. Maybe that's what the gift certificate is about. 073. 073. Come on down. There we go. Give her a hand, folks. Max out in the box. Your flyers, you have a wonderful way to promote and advertise because you have that going right into people's homes. And so you want to make sure to use that flyer effectively right on your box. You can do it off almost all of our computers these days. You can go in and, and create flyers even ourselves. If you need help, ask for help from your colony foods folks. People have visor signs that they have all the cars that sit in the parking lot are have their logo on it, their restaurant logo on it, so that everybody's turned with their visors towards the sun. You see your name all across the parking lot. How cool can that be? How inexpensive can that be? Any offer should be within a specific period of time. Maybe you have a, a giveaway, like we have these tickets. Maybe you have on a slow night, you say, okay, we're giving out these tickets. The winner is going to get a 10% discount on their meal tonight. Maybe you have, um, you go out, everybody gets a lottery ticket within this, the, the, um, all the patrons that are here within this half an hour that come into our facility get a lottery ticket on a slow night. Word gets around that you're having a lot of fun in your establishment. Maybe you do, maybe you go one of those, those big church bingo, like you get a box for like $24 at Toys R Us, and you do a little bingo at the table, and so just for like a half an hour on a slow night, and whoever's the bingo winner gets their meal free. I mean, some of that excitement, some of the interesting things cost you next to nothing, but you're starting to spread word of mouth about excitingly being in your place. Maybe you have a prize of some logo uh, or a, some signed ball from a, from a sports team as a, as a winning prize. Any of those things are possible. Okay, bring in a new element. Maybe you bring in a caricature artist, um, or maybe a magician, maybe a clown, maybe a lo local celebrity or sports figure. If you do bring in like a, a celebrity or a sports figure, you can, you'd be surprised how reasonable those things can be, but make sure you send out a press release. Get a lot of play for that but even the clown and a magician and a caricature artist, all of that might be fun in your establishment and very, very little outlay of money to you. Maybe you put up a big, big local map and have them put pins where they live. Have a little kid put the pins in, or if, if you think it's the kids are too little, maybe they put stickers up where they live, and you also learn something about your marketing area, where people are coming from. Yeah. Yes? You said earlier, after set. Um, that, and that's a good question. I'll actually give a dollar for a good question. <laughs> okay, but a good question because, no, I don't think you should spend on formal advertising um, in a formal entertainment so very much, but I think if we think out of the box a little bit and think of um, ways that we can do that, you get the word of mouth, you get the um, the play, but you don't have to um, spend the big bucks. That's why I want you to think a little bit, analyze a little bit. Cross advertising with a florist. When you do something with a local florist place, you put flowers in your place, it gives a wonderful, flowers have a real high um, uh, a perception by your patrons that it's a prop, that it's, that it's a friendly place, that it's a warm place, 
and it might be a wonderful way to cross our title with them. Maybe you become your city sports team club. Maybe you roll the dice. We've got a pair of dice here. Maybe you roll the dice for a discount on a slow night. Maybe a smile button. All those little yellow smiley buttons. You can easily get those. You put a dollar behind you. You give ten dollars to each of your employees. And this is the deal. And they explain it to their customers. If I don't smile, I give you the dollar. And you'll watch how many employees then smile so they can take the other ten dollars home with them for the night. But you begin to perpetuate that you're a friendly place. Staff incentives, let's talk about just a few of those. An employee of the month, maybe naming a pizza after a loyal employee. <coughs> maybe you want to sell more appetizers. And so you say, okay, at $10, um, if we're at the 50-yard line, everybody gets $10 for, uh, or so the person selling the most appetizers gets $10. And then if we move to the 40-yard uh, line, so you have your goal. We sell X amount of, app, um, of appetizers, move it up to the 40-yard line, and then the top person gets $20 as a, as a goal. So playing a little football game on continually improving us with our staff. Maybe you give play money away for good performances and then have an auction for prizes. High-quality work or good attendance, Maybe get out of work free card. I mean, they have to give you seven days notice. Make sure you clear that up so they don't all of a sudden say on a busy night, uh, hey, I'm taking my, you know, get out of uh, work free card. But easy way to, to help. I'll tell you what I also want you to do, best practices pool. You know, I wish that we were all those wonderful, supportive managers as we would like to be. But you say, hey, I'd pay for enthusiasm if I could find enthusiasm. But I want you to pick something that goes right and then I want you to put a dollar in the pot. Let's say Johnny particularly cleans up the stock room. Not every time he cleans it up, but he does a particularly great job. You put a dollar in the pot for Johnny. You love the fact that Susie remembers her customer's name. I'll put a dollar in the pot for Susie. Maybe you love the way of enthusiasm that Julie had when she called on that customer. You put all the dollars in the pot. At the end of the month, whoever caused a dollar to go into the pot, then you have the drawing. And that hundred dollars guess what happens? They start coming to you and say, oh, you got to put a dollar in the pot for Julie because this is what she did. And so we're rewarding what we want. Rewarding best practice rather than just criticizing. Incentives, the price of an item equates to a point value. So let's say you say, um, whoever sells the most, and let's say it is a, um, a pizza that you have on that's going for $17.99, and those are going to be the points that this person gets. Um, the uh, maybe it is an appetizer for 5.25, and so maybe you put 5.25 or the number of points that that, um, that that staff person gets, and whoever has the most points at the end of the time period, whether that's the night or the week, then that's another way to reward. Okay, we got to really um, finish up here. I just want you to avoid the shotgun approach where you have this big mass communication, a lot of this very expensive stuff. You don't have to do it. There's so many ways that you can improve your business. Just Pick that item and stick through it, follow through with it. I want you to be careful about avoiding discounting. We're in the pizza business, have got so all we do is discount. People or customers on the other end calling you up get upset if they have to pay full price for a pizza. So I want you to offer specialty items, add on to the tickets with new items, um, and, and increase it that way. Here's some alternatives. Maybe you bring a friend to lunch and we'll feed them for half price. To show appreciation for your business, allow us to tip your waitress for you. Enjoy a 10% discount at the party store. Remember one of those cross-advertising things? 20% off a co-worker's lunch on your next visit. Bounce back offer, meaning they come back in a short period of time. And we've got to finish up here. Analyze your hours. Maybe you can be opening later. Um, change your window displays often. Sample to a local DJ or local businesses your products. This is Joe mentioned earlier. Um, don't forget, if you're going to do radio, um, you've got a repetition as the key to radio. Okay, punch card. Here are the pizza punch cards. And we're going to give out one of those and with a, uh, uh, a black and white template here, if you could pass those out. And remember those specialty punch things. A uh, local bowling team, the champs, maybe the temperature gauge when the temperatures hit 45, 45 degrees, maybe you offer one of your things for 45 cents or $4.50.
other avenues. Don't forget about increasing your takeout with suggestive selling. Check in the hotel. If you have a hotel in your area, maybe you can be the room service, supply your menu to them, launch limited catering, investigate delivery service, target neighborhood businesses, encourage pickup. Maybe you even encourage pickup of an uncookie so that they're going to bake off at a later time. All of those are possibilities for you. Don't forget, you must have a plan and you need to keep that plan on track. Top 10 signs, you've gone to a bad restaurant. You ready? Just like David Letterman's top 10 list. 10, you asked for change for a dollar and the waitress asked if you had anything smaller. Number nine reason why you know you've gone to a bad restaurant. They've got poison control on speed dial. Number eight reason why you've gone to a bad restaurant. They're open 24 hours, but there aren't any garbage cans out back. Ugh. Okay, number seven reason why you've gone to a bad restaurant. The sign out front says, as seen on cops. Ooh. Number six reason why you've gone to a bad restaurant. The waitress uses apron stains to point out the daily special. Ooh. Number five reason you've gone to a bad restaurant. You suddenly realize it's the water that's amber colored, not the glass. Oh. Number five reason why you've gone to a bad restaurant. After presenting the food, the waiter says, good luck. Number three, they've got Pepto-Bismol on draft. Number two reason you've gone to a bad restaurant. The manager's name is Heimlich. Ooh, okay. Number one reason you've gone to a bad restaurant. And the number one sign is your burrito turns out to be an ace bandage. Ew! Ladies and gentlemen, I've been honored to make this first presentation for you today. Please be safe. May God bless and go home safely.
see what's going on. We got more menus up here if anybody doesn't have one. Same restrictions. 
you have the wonderful ability to be flexible. So that's why I want you to stay away from lamination. For you to make any changes, then it becomes very costly <coughs> for you to make changes in your menu. Flexibility, interchangeable menu sheets, um, so that you can um, easily make changes, easily add items. You've got to try new items. You must try new items. Every single chain has told us that. And they're spending the big bucks on advertising, so they're getting return on investment from their advertising dollars. But it's taught us something. Denny's with the skillet sensations. You've got uh, TGI Fridays with Cajun chicken. You've got KFC with their cholesterol bowl. Have you seen that? With the mashed potatoes and the chicken and the gravy and the cheese, oh my gosh. However, it is a new item that you're going to be coming and trying. And so that brings new items in. Remember with that repeat business, 80% of what we do is in repeat business. And so therefore, we've got to make sure that we're enticing those people. So let's talk a little bit about how much time do customers on average spend reading their menu? Less than how much time? Anybody want to try? That's not bad. It's actually less. Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll give, you gave it the first try. Okay, you gave it the first try. Less than three minutes reading a menu. You know, TGI Fridays had war and peace. You know, and, and I go all across the country and talk to operators just like yourselves, right? And they said, oh, okay, that's TGI Fridays. They're very successful. I said, I think they're successful despite the size of their menu. Because you didn't have to take my word for it. You looked and watched a customer as they went through that menu. They went about three quarters of the way through, and then they started going back because they thought maybe they'd missed something. We don't want to make a challenge for our customers to, to order our products. So we want to make it, keep it simple. Do what you do well. Do what you do well. And so I was vindicated last year, however, because TGI Fridays decreased the amount of the size of their menus. So they made them smaller. OK, now let's talk about menu analysis reveals that 70% of the items sold, your items that are sold, are how many of the uh, same how many selections? They're seventy percent of their time. They're ordering the same. What number of products? Ten selections. So seventy percent of the time they're ordering the same ten selections. What did you say? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a dollar for choice. There we go. So this is what you want. For a full service restaurant, you want 40 to 50 items on the menu, no more than that. All right, now let's look at our, the pattern that we set up here. Where will the customer gaze go first on this fold-out menu? Where is the customer's gaze going to go first? Top left. Top right. Top right. You put yours right. You put yours in the right area. Up, um, so. And here's the gauge pattern, top right and then top left. And here's how it goes. This is exactly how it goes. Fold out menu, this is where the eye goes. Done like this. On a single page, this is where the customer's eye goes. On a tri-fold, this is where the customer's eye goes. And the reason you want to know that is because you want to select the items that are going to be the most advantageous for you to sell. And you want to put those in those areas. That's what that's all about. You want to put those in the areas. That's why everybody's entree should have appeared on the right-hand side. Everybody's entrees should have appeared on the right-hand side. You had something that I think you were right in what you said. Because your yeah, menu was, was set up that way. It was set up that way. There we go. We're not being honest. There we go. All right. So that's how, that's how the vision path folds out. Changing of item, uh, item replacement should be based on gross profit gain, not on what? Food cost. Food cost, that's exactly right. Because that's what they used to train chefs to do. Food cost, food cost, food cost. And we want you to keep an eye on your food cost, but we want to make absolutely certain that you are making and placing those that you're making the most money on. You're walking most money to the register. That's what it's all about. Okay, now this is the kicker. This is why on the sheets, 
people that had some pretty good things in a paragraph of items, just like you've got there. The top and the last items are chose, chosen how frequently? Yeah, the top is chosen most often, is the first item chosen, that is chosen most often, and the last item is the second most often chosen. And believe it or not, in that paragraph, that's what the research says. So when you looked at your worksheet, on that worksheet, then you would have had your shrimp cocktail should be on the first of your appetizers, second would be your mozzarella sticks, and third would be your chicken wings. Those are the ones that you're making the most money on. <coughs> Andres, sirloin strip should be in the number one spot. A few of you had that in there. But the breaded shrimp should be the last of the carrots. You made the most money, second most of the uh, money, on the breaded shrimp item. It doesn't really matter about the two in between. It doesn't really have a significance there. The desserts, number one should be cheesecake. And then cherry pie, and then the French silk pie should be third. That is the um, placing for your desserts. All we want you to do is make the most money that you possibly can make. That's what the menu engineering is all about. Now, we have only talked about gross profit here, but I want you to take into consideration volume. Whoops, let's go back. So, let's say your ribs, you're selling for $12.95, your cost is $4.25, and you have a gain of $8.70, that's your profit, and your chicken is only making you $7.47, but look down here, your ribs, you got a, selected 15 times for the evening, and you got $130.50 as a gross for the night, but then your chicken is ordered 25 times, even though it actually has less of a contribution, it nets out to you, I mean, grosses out to you $186.25 for the evening. That's the reason why you want to look at volume. Most of your POS, who can tell me what POS means from your ask? Go ahead. Point of sale, absolutely. Your cash register, many of your, will tell you what those numbers are. Now remember, you're going to look at the performance in a category. If one of the items in that category, let's say those the list of that you've got right there, and your pork chops are under 3% in a category, under performance of three, less than 3%, and you want to look at that item to see whether you want to keep it at all, or see whether you want to replace it with a new item, and get with your colony folks to be able to have them help you to find out new and exciting things that you can add to your menu. You've got to entice those repeating customers keep coming back in. I just had one of the suppliers come to me over the break and he said, you know, I sure hope they take advantage of some of those things that you're mentioning, some of the things to try. He said, I go to my same neighborhood places time after time, week after week, and they, it's always the same. Nothing new, nothing fresh, nothing different. Please take advantage of some of the, the options to add a new item, to try something new when it comes to promoting because you want to keep those regular customers coming back and back and back. Now, customers will not notice incremental price increases of 25 cents if it's under $5, 50 cents if it's over $5. That's why I want you to start raising some prices if you can, because you have got, you think the gas stations, they said, oh, oh, I'm not going to go up on my prices, even though, the supplier went up for me, I can't go up on my prices. No, the gas, in the gas stations do what they have to do. I want you to do what you have to do and go up on the prices. This is, these are national numbers that are going up all over the country. And so we want to be able to make sure that you get what you deserve to be able to make. Now let's look at this. Let's say you have $9.60 on your menu. And you change it to $9.95. Remember, those customers are not going to notice those 25 cents, those 50 cents differences. So I want you to be able to make that change. So even 35 cents added to 10 orders per day only, you get 350 times 300 days that you're open. That's over $1,000 one item alone. It might make the difference between whether you survive or don't survive in this competitive marketplace. So I want you to look at those and get with your colony folks. They have the knowledge. Some of those other companies 
companies out there don't have the background and the knowledge that they do. They have, don't have the vision that they do. They will sit down with you and work with you on what's going to work. Now, not everything works. you got to try some things, but they will help you. Pricing rounding strategies will only add as much as 3% to your profit. <laughs> your menu with dot 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 pricing. So you have the item and you have dot 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 pricing. Because you, I'll tell you what happens. Your patrons make the decision, or they say, ooh, but then they say, uh, price. They make the decision based on price. I would rather you have a nice description, a wonderful description of what that item is, and then you put in the price and they Maybe they get hooked on how fabulous that sounds, whatever that is, whatever your spaghetti offering is, or your, your specialty pasta offering, or whatever that item is that you put on there. Wonderful mouth watering description if you don't know. I said, I'm not any good at that, Kay, I'm not any good at that. No problem. That's what the Colony Foods is there for, to be able to help you to bring you those mouth watering descriptions, because they can get with our suppliers, because that's what they do, even if they don't know. They will get with somebody who does know and help, be able to help you with those mouth water descriptions. Okay. You want to watch for font size and color choices. I went to a place in Texas. Really dark wood, wonderful. They had a big rope. It was like a nautical kind of theme. Great, you know, but it's beige, this menu. And I'm looking at this and I say, I can't read this. I am how humiliated am I? I can't read this menu. It was so clever and so cool. I couldn't read the menu. So let's not make it a challenge for our patients to, to order from us. <coughs> These are ways to highlight. So maybe you have special placements, asymmetrical on the, on the menu. Icons, why do you think Applebee's has a little apples? That's not because it's healthy. It's because those are the items they want to move. Those are the items they want to push. And so we want to be able to have you maybe put icons for you, or maybe you put a little pizza by a, um, a particular item that's terrific for you uh, to, to, to go with. Function <coughs> size, type of product, plate presentation, competitor's pricing, merchandising, seasonal items, all of these things can be value perceptions that you can add to your value to your customers. So you want to look at those possibilities. Look at those descriptions. Remember those mouth-watering descriptions? Keep those in mind. Desserts, drinks, and kids' meals are really good with separate menus. If you can possibly uh, do a separate menu for the kids, for desserts, or for um, any uh, drinks, anything like that, those things work. You've got to review how it's going. Remember the performance of less than 3% on an item. And you want to change that menu frequently. A minimum of two times a year what they suggest. I'm not saying you drop the whole menu out, but you add a new item at least twice a year. They suggest more like four times a year that you add something new or something different. But at least two. And you want to use it as a marketing tool. I mean, maybe you, um, you, you set up that your history, you know, that maybe you've been in business a long time, but that ought to be a menu somewhere. Maybe you're dedicated to fresh ingredients. Maybe you've dedicated to making the finest pizza that is, that is in the city. And that kind of statement on the, on the front of your menu, what your, what your intent is, what your, um, your history is, or what value proposition did you want to bring? What is your unique selling proposition? All of those ought to be on. Maybe you're doing banquets and catering. Maybe you're doing um, a, a, a great job of additional items. We're bringing in a new sandwich <coughs> or whatever that is. Special events, the history perspective of where you're coming from, all of that's possible. And of course, you want to ask your um, folks for help. Now, let's go back to um, some of these costs. All right, let's talk a little bit about the food cost segment of it. And let me hand out. You know, I've been doing this a long time, talking directly with the operators. And somebody came up to me after a, a session and said, hey, you know, I've been in business now a year and a half. I still don't really understand my food costs. So I want
want to do, I want to do this sheet. If I could have some help in handing out this If I could have some help in handing out. This is a breakdown of the thing. Okay, this is a breakdown in exactly what that cost is. One of the problems that we have, many in your side of the business are making the pizzas without portion control. They're eyeballing what they think that I will look like. Now maybe you have someone that is capable of doing that. Maybe you have someone that's very, very good and probably if you weighed it out, that would probably be pretty close to what that cost is. But I think that we should have scoops or cups or exact counts, this many pieces of pepperoni, whatever that is, for all of our pizzas. We must make sure that it's exact and that it stays consistent throughout your operation. It would be a big, big cost factor for you if that's not in line. Don't estimate anymore, especially with personnel that you think are not really capable of estimating. Maybe you really are. Maybe you probably, everything that you, um, you actually, Maybe you say, I think this is probably what it is, and it measures out to be pretty close to what you wanted to do. Um, and maybe you have a few people like that, but I would suggest that you try to go and make it exact. Costs are too important these days not to. And so we break down these costs. And so this is what your total cost is, whatever that's going to be on your hamburger, your pizza. Let's say you have a targeted 30%, a targeted 30% food cost. And so you take your total and you, do, you put $1.63 in your calculator, divide by 0 0.30, and that's going to give you a suggested selling price for 30%. Check and find out if you're making the proper money on, and ask your, your colony folks to help you out, sit down with you and work those costs out. So this comes to $5.43. Do we want to put $5.43 on our menu? No, and why not? We could get more money, couldn't we? Couldn't we get more money? So let's say we change it to $5.95. So now we're going to try to go after what is our exact food cost now? What is those, the food cost percentage now? So now we're going to put the food cost into the calculator first. You're going to divide the, the uh, bigger number and divide the smaller number by the bigger number. So you're going to put in $1.63. And then you're going to divide by 5.95. You're going to put $1.63 in your calculator, divide by 5.95, and that's going to give you, it's going to come out 0.274. All I want you to do is to take that, and I want you to move the decimal over to, some things say divide, multiply by 100, but I just say move the decimal over two places. But that's going to give you your exact food cost. If you're saying, I, I've never really, kind of really worked out how that works. So this is exactly how to do it with the math on how to make it come out. Yes? What's the psychological impact on picking 595 as opposed to 599? Is there, does the brain perceive it differently because it's still under $6 and you, do, you bring in four cents more? No, I, th I think that's worth a dollar. Yeah. Um, no, I think you should go for 599. I do. Okay, you have to Absolutely. I mean, you are. The problem is, is that we're we're struggling to make ends meet because of the cost things that have come down to us through no fault of our own. And so, what we have to be able to do is, is survive out there. So I think it's great. The first two digits is what the um, and it's not true just in food service. This is true for any industry. The first two digits, just like why do you think you go to a car place and the car place says twenty six nine ninety five? or $26,999. You think in your terms of 26, even though you might two or three seconds later think, oh, well, okay, it's 27. But we're, it's just, it's, it's the way with all of retail. So your customers are still perceiving those first digits. Yeah. I'm just wondering what the thought is on um, raising the prices in the house and they're not saying better than better than customers, but just put, you know, some type of document out there you're actually saying, you know, I think most of the time um, you're going to probably be able to gauge what your, if you're feeling like you really do have 80% of your repeat customers, then you may want to make that announcement. 
what I what a lot of suggestions are out there to be able to make that is maybe you add something extra value that you maybe bring it up with maybe something else and add an additional item in there or show that um, we still have a small version at this price at the, at the uh, regular price but now we're offering you more at the, at the higher price and so that you are able to initiate some of those costs but I think you're going to have to probably know your clients have to get a whole lot of new people coming in all the time I wouldn't say anything I would just up it um, up it if you're getting a lot of neighborhood people that know you, know your, that you know their names and everything, you may, you might want to. So, uh, for the dollar for the question, the question. Okay. The so first thing that we want to do on food cost control is you want to set up those control standards. The biggest problems that we have are excessive waste, theft, and inefficiency, or where your costs come in. That's where the biggest problems are. And you want to set up those controls. That's why I'm saying that I want you to measure, I want you to um, set up um, procedures. Some of us have locked storerooms, um, uh, but we don't ever use it. They just, the thing just stands open. Who knows even where the key ever is anymore. So what we want to be able to do is set up procedures to make it um, more beneficial for you. And it's also not only in the food cost, but it's also in the cells. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's talk about those ways. You want to try to accurately forecast where you're going with your food. What do we think we're going to do based on your history, based on the history from your point of sale? What have you done in the past? Even if you have to keep can tallies of what you've done so that you have a better idea. The more inventory that you have to keep on hand, the more excessive waste you might have, more problems you might have, and so being able to forecast accurately is very good. Okay, you have to maintain that portion control, we talked about that. And you want to control for waste and set. Sometimes if you feel there's a lot, a lot of problem, you may want to add 5% into your food cost to take care of that waste. <laughs> Now, if you only concentrate on selling items with low food costs, the revenue is going to be, would come down. If you only concentrate on selling the high gross profit items, so you, what you want to do is a mixture. Remember, we talked about not only um, the high gross profit, but also volume. So you want to have a mixture of both of those items in your, in your offerings. And you have to think of the difference between cost of uh, food sold, but also your consumed costs. In fact, we, would, we suggest that you put in something for your employees. They feel that they're entitled to eat on your dime. And so being able to set up something for an employee reduced meal or some kind of employee half price or something that you have set up where they get one free meal per shift or whatever it is, you get to set up something. They feel like they're entitled and they're going to take it anyway. So set up something so that the abuse actually is reduced with some kind of program. You've got to take inventory at least once, once a month. If you think you're having a problem with theft, then you might want to take it once a week. I know it's a hassle, I know it's a pain, but you've got to at least take inventory once a month at the very, very minimum. And you want to make sure that you don't want to have too many items, we talked about that before, too many inventory items that you're going to have to carry if you do that. <laughs> All right, and you want to keep um, accurate written, written documentation. You want to um, take into consideration receiving practices and storeroom procedures. Let's say you're, the, the driver's coming in and, and, he, and he has the best intentions in the world, but somehow um, something was overlooked. He, everybody has the best intentions, but you want to work together to try to close that gap so that there's not a concern that you have all the items that you need to have received in. All right, now we talk about the sales cost. Because if you have a cost of $8 and you're only selling it for $15.95, you're not making enough money. You want to make at least a minimum of 28%, the absolute minimum. You want to check and find out where you are on those costs. Because if you're not, I had one group and the, and, the, and the gal said, well, I can't raise my hamburger prices because my customers are going to complain. You're not going to be making hamburgers any year. 
you know, you're going to go out of business unless you can make sure to make the money that you deserve to make. Sales cost controls are first and foremost to make sure that you're making money. How many are charging for delivery? How many of you add a dollar to charge for delivery? Just the one. I, I would certainly consider it. Do you have a... Um, well, I mean, Domino's is doing it. So, I mean... You could also offer the driver part of that. So, you know, you have to Take the money and give the driver half the money. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely, I think you should start. Domino's is doing it. I mean, uh, you don't have to advertise it. No, don't they don't say it. They just give you your total with it included in there. And so, what you need to do is make sure that you, with the gas prices and cream, that you're making that money. Having 
having two different people or two people checking out the drawer at the end of the night can, can give them a check and balance system, making sure that we record those guest checks, number guest checks, duplicate copies, uh, missing numbers, that we keep uh, accountability in place. Okay, and then we've got our mini tips and techniques. We have got, first of all, let me hand out a couple of other things. Here's the day's pattern. We can pass that out. 50 sins of cost control. Menu descriptions. This is the things for a unique set. Sorry, we have all of these to hand out, guys. Now, I have at the end, the last five minutes here, to do our version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Anybody ever seen Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Okay, all right. Now, we've got our, here we go. This is the audience response, okay? We're going to hand out these horns. Please, everybody grab a horn. This is going to be the audience. We've got 10 questions only, just 10 questions. We've got 10 questions only. Everybody get a horn. And I need a contestant. And who is all things that we talked about today? All things that we talked about today. Audience response. Let's hear that. I'm sorry. 